Studio Review for Chapter 15 in the C-Sharp curriculum. This one's called Spa User Validation. It is the third in a three-part series of studios where we have this spa website. And in the last one, in Chapter 14, we actually had added a way to create a user, have a user register. But now we're going to provide validation for that, and we're going to do it by setting up a view model instead of using view bags to pass our user object down. So the first thing you need to do is to open up the same application that you were working on before and check out the user validation branch. That's gonna be your starter code. And the very first thing we're gonna do is to create a view model that will take all of the properties we need from the user and also add on the verify password field since that's something that we need in our form on the page um, and it's there on the template but it's not something that we'd actually want to be encapsulated in the user itself so this add user view model is going to be our go-between so that we have a model that aligns perfectly with what's in the form with the four different um, input fields so just as a reminder the user has username email and password. So we definitely want these three. So what we need to do is come over here in this view models directory. And if you don't have one, you can create one and just add a new file that is a class. So it's going to be add user view model.cs. And we'll use the namespace that is the same as the rest of the application, spa day six, and say public class add user view model. And then inside this class, we just need to start with these three properties. So I'll copy these over because we definitely need all three of these, but we did say that we also needed a fourth property and I can just copy this one and change its name to verify password. All right. So if we look at our ad form, you can see currently they've got uh, several inputs here, um, username, email, password, and verify. And at the moment um, in the controller, when they have the processing uh, method to actually have that post request hit user and uh, process this form. We previously were using model binding, but we were binding to a user class object that just had the first three fields. And then we had to bring in the string verify separately that's coming here from this fourth input, right? Um, so what we're going to be doing now is using our view model to bind uh, instead. And then we'll just be able to bind directly to all four of these and not worry about um this part and also with view models instead of having the name here be the name of the backing field we're going to actually use a different attribute a special asp attribute and use the name of the auto implemented property in pascal case so it'll be uppercase email and so on and so forth and we're not going to be passing these things down through a view bag anymore so we have a, a, a quite a bit of refactoring to do here um the we, did, we got this set up, so it's time to see uh, what we want to do next here. It tells us that the first thing to do is to add the validation attributes that will assign rules for whether or not our conditions have been satisfied by the user as they're filling out the form. So username, password, and verify password are required, so we need to add a required attribute. The username should be um, between five and 15 characters. The email is optional, but if they provide the email, we need to make sure that it at least validates on the basis of it being an email address. And then um, the password and therefore also verify password need to be six to 20 characters. So we can go ahead and add all of these. I'm gonna put a little bit of space between these. It'll be easier to read them as we start adding all of these annotations. So the very first one we want to do here is required. And the only thing we really need to pass in here is an error message. And we'll just say username is required. So that way, if they forget to fill it out, we should see that show up on the page once we're done and we have everything connected. Uh, we also said that the password needed to be required. So let's just put the same attribute here 
And I just realized we have an error because I did not close my parentheses. So let's fix that here and here. Good. Okay. Uh, and then I can copy this one down to here and say password verification is required for the last field. Okay. Now we can do the ones about the length. So if the username is supposed to be five to 15 characters, we can use the string length attribute, pass in the max 15, then pass in the minimum length and set that to five, and then do our error message and say username must be five to 15 characters long. And then, um, we know we need to put this on the password. So we could change this to 20 and a minimum of six. And then here, say uh, password, and I have another typo, let me fix this, must be six to 20 characters long. And then um, we can essentially put the same thing here. Okay. So uh, the last thing here is to say email address, and that one can kind of stand on its own. We're not going to pass any sort of specific rules in, so we'll just let it do kind of a minimal validation of the format of an email address. So uh, that will work for now, and we now have a little bit of validation on every single one of our fields. And because we're going to be binding to this instead of the model, that's why we are putting these rules here. This is what it's going to be checking. But you also may recall that just because we added these rules in the view model does not mean that validation will take place. We have to provide for that in the controller. So our next step is to go over to the user controller and we're going to do a number of things. Um, Enabling, just to stay on the same wavelength, enabling validation is going to be down here where we use model state dot is valid. But before we do that, they would like us to also make sure we pass an instance of add user view model to the add form with the add action method, because this will make sure that it already knows about the format of this, that it knows what the structure is, what the names of all these are when it loads the form the very first time. So right here where we have our I action result add, we can definitely add a route here. And I, I could really just make this HTTP get and then say slash user slash add, just to be very explicit that that's what this is for. Um, and then here we'll create an add user view model, add user view model, um, and just say new. We'll just use that, um, you know, it's got a default constructor. So it just creates an object and we can pass that along to the view just like this. Okay. And we're going to receive that um, in a moment. We'll go over and make our changes in the template, but let's finish what we're doing in the, in the controller first. And so we will go to the actual uh, submit add user form now. This was to display the form to actually load it on the page. This one is what happens when somebody submits it, how do we process it? And it already has this route set for slash user because that matches up with the action here, um, slash user for the form. And so here it's right now, it's receiving this object of the user class. That's the model binding that's in place that encapsulates those first three um, things. So now we can replace this that has the first three properties represented and this one and just receive add user view model and let it encapsulate all four of those together so we're still using model binding we're just binding with the view model now instead of the user model okay so having done that we, that means our references are going to need to change just a little bit so we're going to go to the add user view model here to look up the password and go to the add user view model here to look up verify password because it exists as part of this model. And then here, uh, we actually need to create a new user and then it's going to be passed down just a little bit differently. Now here is the thing um, that I, I provide a little bit of extra explanation for because there's some special syntax here where 
uh, we are actually saying um, we want to create this user, right? So like, you know, user, new user, fine. And we can say new. But then rather than using the constructor where we would just pass in the three properties uh, from here, there's a lot going on. Something that we actually didn't do that we really should have is uh, we should have made these nullable. So let's make the types of our properties all nullable here and also over in the model. So we'll do it here. Um, and that makes it easier for it to be flexible about when it is just checking to see what the properties are versus when it's trying to create an object. But this one also has multiple um, constructors. One that's a no argument constructor and no arg constructor. And this one, of course, which does allow you to set it with all three. But we can't directly use this. Um, what we need to do is use a special syntax called object initializer syntax, where we assign them explicitly and say um, that we're going to set the username in the user to add user view model dot username. And we can do this for the other two properties that are in user email. and password. Okay. And I'll take that comma off there. And then we need a semicolon here because this entire thing is actually one line, right? Um, I just moved it onto multiple lines for formatting purposes. So here, uh, once we have the new user with this system, we're actually gonna pass it down right here like this. And we're just gonna receive it in a different way in the template. Uh, however, we have uh, more logic here we need to deal with. Um, and the other thing is that we have not actually adapted this yet for checking for model state, um, but that's okay. Uh, so the other thing here is that we can take these off because we're going to pass down, if we return, if we return to the add form, we're actually gonna pass down the add user view model again. Uh, that was received here, we'll just pass it right back and send them right back to the form. Um, so we don't need the, the view bag stuff there. This is different. Um, so let's go talk about this. They have some um, instructions here where they talk about using model state is valid to make sure the conditions that are outlined using the validation attributes have been met. So this has specifically to do with the rules that we set in here, all of these attributes, required string length, email address. We don't have anything in here at this time that has anything to do with comparing the password and the verify password yet. So we're going to do that in a bonus mission. For now, that means we have to hang on to our extra logic where we're checking it ourselves here and having our own special error message that'll get displayed at the top of the page here just in that particular instance. So we're going to have to modify our logic a little bit. The first thing we need to do is say if model state is valid. And what this does is it both activates the validation, it makes sure that it actually takes place, but then it also returns a Boolean true or false to let us know if any of the rules were broken. So we'll say if it's, if it's uh, valid, and then we'll say if the passwords match, then if both of those things are true, we can go ahead and we can complete this. If we passed validation based on all of the rules that are in the view model, but the passwords don't match, then that's where we need to create this error. And it's just a simple string, so it's no big deal to pass it down through a, a view bag. Um, we don't need to worry too much about any sort of runtime error that would exist like we would with an object, which is why um, using view models is more important. And I'm gonna, really talk about that more as we see how we receive the information into uh, the templates in a minute. But essentially we're just saying, you know, we would be doing that. And then regardless of whether this line ends up being executed or not, finally we return uh, the view and send them back to the form. And we either have this error message or we don't. Um, but the other, path, the path that is actually the happy path where everything's good and the passwords match, it has an early return. So either we're going to return the view to go to the index and pass along our user, or we're going to return the view to go back to the form and pass along that view model that binds with all of the fields in the form. Okay. 
So this logic should work for where we are right now. So um, it tells us that we need to um, refactor the views. So we're going to go over to index and make sure that that user model is accessible. So right here, we created the new user, we passed it down to index, it's time to receive it as such. And so what we'll do is uh, start with at using spot A6, and then we'll say at model lo lo lowercase m, and then just say user. So we're saying we're receiving an object of the user class. And this is where view model is so helpful because it allows us to make sure that that object is strongly typed. We This template now knows it's looking specifically for a user class object. And when I come here and replace viewbag.user and instead say model, um, it is aware, oh, I need to put the at on though, there we go. It's aware that username is a valid property. Uh, because it's uh, aware that, uh, of the model. Um, and it knows that it points back to that. And so uh, this is very helpful in preventing runtime errors because we can be confident that we have set this up with something that is actually going to work because it's from that class. If I was to come in here and just say like name, you'll notice that VS Code has this uh, and says that user does not contain a definition for name. This was not something that we were able to do when we were using a view bag because it didn't have a way to tell the difference. But now that we have this syntax with at model to receive this uh, model that is pointing to that specifically, we have that sort of protection against runtime errors. Okay, so uh, let's come back over here and talk about the other path. So in the path of where the view is, is taking us to the add form, we're giving it the add user view model here and also here, right? So either way, that means we first we need to receive it. So I'm going to make sure that we are in the namespace and we are uh, receiving the model that is of type add user view model. And now that it's aware of this, we can start really changing things here. Um, and there's going to be one more thing we need to do, but we're, you know, we're not passing down anything through a view bag this way anymore. Uh, we're going to re reference everything from this model. So let's uh, see. They tell us here that there's specific formatting that they want us to use. That, and by putting everything in a div, it's going to eliminate the need for us to have all of these line breaks everywhere because that's a uh, bootstrap class that will actually format it very nicely. So I'm just gonna copy this and we're gonna replace our username. And we no longer have to have this if else type thing where maybe we're receiving the username back because that we're sending them back to the form after submission, or maybe they're going to the form for the first time. Uh, now that we have this and we have sent it in in both of these methods, it doesn't matter. We can just do one thing and not have to have that logic. So I can replace this entire thing right here and put our new format in. I'm going to uh, fix this a little bit. Okay, the other thing is we were using name before, right? Type and name. Now we have ASP4, which allows us to give the auto-implemented property name so capital U username, and then I can just copy that everywhere here. The input and the label both uh, are marking this. And so now in the input, we no longer have to say name because this is taking care of it for us. And then here in the span, this ASP validation for basically um, says, okay, for the input that has this name for that field, I'm gonna look up the validation rules that are in the add user view model for this particular field. And if one of them is broken, then I will display the error message using this span. Otherwise I won't display anything at all. So it has that logic built in. It's not like this where we had to explicitly pass down our own error and then use the if here to decide whether to display it or not. That's all built in right here. It's very nice. So now we can do this again for the other three. So I will do one for email. Okay, and then do one for password. Uh, 
Let me just copy that. Okay. And then of course, um, verify password. And on this one, I will put the space in since that's what's actually um, what they see on the page. Uh, and then I can get rid of everything except for the last one that serves as a button. Okay, and on the password, um, we need on the input to actually say type equals password if we want for it to obscure what they're typing in and just show the dots instead um, for security purposes so that no one can look over your shoulder and see what you're typing in. And then uh, we also may want on our spans to actually put um, a bootstrap class to make it red. So I could say class equals text danger. That's a bootstrap class that usually defaults to red unless you change the theme. Uh, so we can put that in our spans. And then we should see when we have, when we're testing it out and we're testing all this validation, we should see those in red. Okay, um, so I think this is going to work. I think this was the last thing we needed to do. So it's time to test this out. You know, they say here, test, 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 and that's true. We've made a lot of changes. All of it was necessary because it all has to work together. But now that we've got it in there, we can go ahead and run this. So I'm going to say .NET run and let it run and then pull this up at localhost 7115 apparently. And we'll go over to slash user slash add. That's where our form is. And the first thing I'm going to do is test the validation. I'm just going to say submit. And look at that. Username is required. Password is required. Password verification is required. So the first thing it checked was, um, you know, these are blank. So let me just give you the messages for that. So I could satisfy that and say, you know, um, let me just put something in here. I'll start typing and then try to submit it. Now it it knows that it's not blank anymore, but it registers on the fact that it's too few characters, right? It has to be five to 15 characters long. So I say, okay, no problem. I've got a nice message telling me what I need to do different. So I'll do that. And then let's say here, I start to type in my email address, but that's all I do. Um, now it's going to actually just use the browser validation to say, I have to have that at symbol in there. It knows that's not an email address. So I'll say, okay, see at j.com, how's that? <laughs> And then I'm good on those two when I try to submit again, but I still need to do these. So let me try um, doing a password that's too short. And it says they, it must be uh, six to 20 characters long. So now I'll fix that. And the last thing to test here is what happens if they're not the same. Okay, then I get this message up here, passwords do not match, try again. So that was my special message that was separate, that depends on passing down that error message because of the logic we had, because we were the ones comparing the password against verify password to decide if that was an, an additional thing that might be wrong, and then providing that message to be passed down. So if you got this far, you completed the assignment. Congratulations. Um, of course, we should probably also make sure that it does go through. So let's just do that last check here. I'll put in passwords that are the same. Yeah. Okay. So then it takes us to the index page slash user and says, welcome to our spa, C. Jones. So it definitely got this user and was able to access, you know, model.username there. Um, no problem. Okay. So what they want us to do for the bonus mission is to fix uh, this whole thing of having to do this logic separately ourselves and make it possible to let our view model do it for us. There is an attribute called compare that allows us to um, compare one property with another and have a message just for that. And then we can let our um, logic here, model state dot is valid, take care of it for us, and we don't have to have any of this. So we need to do a number of things here. We need to remove this because we're not going to need it anymore. And then um, we need to remove this. Again, we're not gonna need it. Um, we can actually remove this, this whole if statement here since model state dot is valid is going to take care of it for us. So I'll just clean this up a little bit here. But then of course we have to have the rules in order for that to take place. So we go over to our view model and say, we need to add one more rule. 
I'm actually going to put it on the last one. So I'm going to add it here and I'm going to say compare and then pass in a string of the name of the field that I want to compare against, which is password. And then error message, I'm going to say passwords must match. Okay. And that should take care of it. So let me spin this up again. Okay, and we'll come over here and go back to our form. And we'll try this again. So I'll make sure that these are valid. I'll just skip the email since it's not required, but then I'll do something here where these are you know, not the same. There we go. And we see our message now looks just like all the other ones where it's right here next to the field. Uh, it didn't require any special logic because it was handled as one of the many rules we applied. And that's all there is to it. So I hope this has been helpful in uh, you know, getting you more comfortable with working with view models and understanding um, why it, they are actually better for things like this, where you have objects that have specific properties and you wanna make sure that they're very strongly typed so that there are not going to be any runtime errors because something was passed in that wasn't the right type and the template didn't know about it if you're just using a view bag. But if you're doing it like this, it will know. Um, because it's going to require it to check it at compile time, and it won't even let you compile the code unless it all checks out. All right, I will see you next time.